y'all. Welcome back to episode two of Niches Get Stitches. Today we are being visited by our sister Bridget. You heard us chat about her a bunch in our last episode. And uh, and today we just want to welcome her. We're so glad she's visiting. Yay! Glad to be here. <laughs> uh, so today uh, we're hoping to actually get this vlog in order. So our last episode, Melissa and I just kind of winged it, didn't really know what we were doing, but now we have a set, we have graphics, and we're ready to go. Uh, first we just want to catch y'all up on what we've been doing this month. Uh, Melissa, you want to kick it off talking about the retreat? Make or Love up at the Sabasco Harbor Resort. We had such a lovely time, so wonderful. I got to meet, to me, it was almost like being starstruck and I fangirled a little bit all over Amy. I did too, I don't even know her. <laughs> Real sorry about that. <laughs> was a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> um, but we had just a wonderful time. I learned a ton, a ton, a ton, and we'll talk about some of the stuff I learned when we talk about our works in progress later, but it was such a lovely resort, and the food was phenomenal, and just being there was much like being on the set of Dirty Dancing, like, you got <laughs> up in the morning, and they served you breakfast, and like, there was activities on the grounds, and all my classes were on the ground, so it was like going to knitting camp, actually. I went to knitting camp. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I wasn't supposed to go, but because of the hurricane, I got to go, and I had a good time, honestly, just hanging out in the cabin. I even had a telework, and I still had a great time. They had this uh, saltwater pool, and the salt was so dense that you could just float in it without swimming, without like kicking your hands or mm -hmm. kicking your feet at all. So I was just like Peter Panning <laughs> throughout the pool. Cause I was like, this is so fun. <laughs> so yeah, if you are ever looking for a place to stay in Maine, I highly recommend that resort just in general. Not even if you think that you want to go to knitting camp, just in general. It was beautiful. It was, it was so, so gorgeous. And the, right on the, right on the ocean, you want to tell the story about our ocean adventures? Sure. <laughs> so first someone at lunch, someone that was there as a vendor, had said that she had put her hand in the water at the resort, shook it about, and then there was all this bioluminescent algae in that water. And we were like, what? That sounds so cool. So me, Melissa, and her friend, we go and we just kind of stand on the side of the dock because there's enough agitation in the water from the boats floating that you think, like, that you should be able to see it. Mm -hmm. But we couldn't see it. So we go and ask one of the bartenders, and the bartender says, oh, you have to go all the way over to this beach to see that, and here's how you get there. So Melissa and I are like, okay, we'll do that. We put it into a GPS. We got a little lost. It was pitch black outside. There was almost no moon out. And we, Melissa only had, my phone was dead, and Melissa had 22% on her phone. <laughs> so... We're using, we're still using the GPS though, like idiots, and we get to the turn and it's either you go straight or you go right. Well, the GPS is saying to go right, even though it doesn't really feel like we should go right, so we go right, and we're immediately in someone's driveway, and we panic. We're like, oh no, we're not supposed to be here. So Melissa turns around, suddenly we're stuck in like a ton of mud, and Melissa immediately loses it. She's like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I'm like, it's cool. The neighbors, the people who live here are watching us. We can immediately see them in the window because they know we don't belong there. And so I'm like, I'll go talk to them, see if there's someone inside. Because there's like four or five big trucks in this driveway. And I think like maybe one of them is a big man who can help us. So I go up and I'm like, hi, I'm so sorry. We were looking for this thing, the beach, and we got a little lost. Now we're stuck in the mud. And she, it's, an, it's an older lady and she's like, no problem, I'll send someone down. 
So this younger woman comes down. She's like our age. And she's like, ah, oh, this happens all the time. All we need to do is rock it. We got this. So her and Melissa are rocking it. I have the gas pedal to the floor. But immediately behind us is this little tiny boat. And so I'm like, I also don't want to run into their boat. <laughs> So, as soon as the car catches, I slam on the brakes, and this woman who helped us fell face first in the mud. Oh, I no. felt so bad. Melissa loses a shoe, because her shoe is so deep in the mud there. And at this point, we're just like, well, do we, do we still go? <laughs> <laughs> and so I say, we should still go. Like, we just did, we went through all of this, we're going. So we turn down the right way and we drive and drive again in pitch black, covered, like just forest. And suddenly we arrive at what looks like a parking lot, but there are no lights. We so we again and now Melissa's phone is at maybe 17 percent. So instead of using the proper flashlight, we're just using the face of the phone to light mm -hmm, our way, mm -hmm. and it's too dark. We can't see anything. We get to what is very clearly where water used to be, the ripples in the sand. And I'm like, Melissa, I think we're walking through ocean. And suddenly we hear this couple arguing to the left of us about, I don't even remember, but the guy said something, I wish you would just stop. And I was like, we, not, we shouldn't be here no matter what is the answer. <laughs> so they see our face of our phone glowing and we, they say, hey, how are you? And we shout back, hey, we're all right. We're looking for these bioluminescent fish. And the, uh, the girl responds, oh, you have to walk out about a half mile to find those. Wow. And, and so I, Melissa and I were like, oh, no, we good. <laughs> <laughs> we immediately turned around. Melissa's like, Trina, I can't find the tree line. I'm like, Melissa, it's right there. <laughs> Don't panic. We'll, we're going to be fine. We get back to the car. We drive back to the hotel. And so Melissa, now being dirty from the pushing of the car, is like, I'm dirty now, let me go put my hand in this ocean and see if, in fact, there is bioluminescent algae. Mm -hmm. Honestly, like, immediately she stuck her hand in and there was bioluminescent algae. We were so mad. And then you didn't even have to put your hand in because it had, like, attached to a rope uh -huh. that was strung up by the dock and it was just living there. So as it waved back and forth, the, gr the rope glowed. So if you do visit the resort... <laughs> Either Don't. prepare to walk a half mile in the pitch black dark, or <laughs> just put your hand in the ocean and shake it around. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, but it was still fun. We still had a really good time. So I, as a non-attendee, I would go back. Yeah. It's a pretty good uh, recommendation. Yeah. The ladies at Shore Lodges, Shore Ledges, um, they... I was a first timer and this this event people go like five every year so they've been like five or six times and um, they were so gracious and let us attend like they let us go to hang out in their cabin afterwards and free beer yeah. <laughs> and, and they had lovely cheese and crackers and so <laughs> I'm super grateful for them and they were somewhere to go and have a beer after our misadventure. Yeah, Rachel made me this one drink that was, it might have been, I think it was vanilla vodka, pumpkin beer with a, the rim of sugar, cinnamon sugar. Mm. It was delicious. That sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, I went to Portland, Oregon with a work conference and that was a really good time. I ended up going to Astoria afterwards and Mostly for Goonie stuff. I love Goonies. You'll see a little Goonies thing, a little Goonies embroidery that I made. Uh, Goonies is hands down my favorite movie. And so it was really fun to go see the house and see the convenience store from one of the cutscenes. And just, uh, I tried to see Haystack Ridge, but there was nothing but fog there. Lame. But overall, Astoria was super cute for its maritime history too. Uh, so if you ever think about going to Astoria, I recommend it. We do want to ask Bridget some questions. So last week we talked about why we love crafting and what got us into crafting. So Bridget, let's turn those questions to you. Why did you start crafting? Well, I guess initially I started knitting. Um, I'm a knitter like Melissa. And I started because a friend of mine in my book club offered to teach the rest of the book club. And she is an awesome knitter. However, I'm left-handed. So it turned out to not be that helpful for me oh, no. because she just didn't really know how to look at my hands. She didn't, 
at the time we didn't understand mirroring one another that well and so I told Melissa who is was a very good knitter at the time and is even better now and Melissa taught herself how to knit left-handed so that she could then teach me and I don't think without Melissa I would have actually become a knitter I would have joked around it you know, joked around with it a little bit for a month or two but I never would have really started any projects and so Melissa is my big inspiration uh, she's made some amazing projects and she still is making even better ones and yeah because of her I'm a decent knitter and I'm getting better and I actually learn new strategies and uh, yeah she's been a big inspiration for me also I just love having handmade things I know Trina I think mentioned on the last episode that she wasn't able to find things that she wanted and so she thought she just needed to make them herself and I feel the same way about a lot of things I haven't made myself that many projects yet but I'm excited to eventually once I complete a lot of gifts that I have lined up <laughs> um, so yeah that is my inspiration I guess okay and what do you love about crafting what do I love about crafting the thing I love most about crafting is it's very meditative mm. I when you're sitting down knitting, you're just in the project. You're not thinking about all the other things that you have to do. And a lot of times, which I know um, Melissa does this too, I'll listen to a book on audio. And so I'm just in the book, I'm in my project, and I don't have to think about everything else that's going on. It's kind of like um, if you guys have ever done coloring, like adult coloring mm -hmm. books, that is very meditative for me. Because it's all the big patterns and you're focused on um, making all your colors you know, match and you're coloring in these tiny squares knitting is very similar for me I'm I'm in the zone I'm focused on the project and it's kind of an easy way to not necessarily check out but just kind of like be with yourself for a little while um, so that is what I love most about crafting and specifically knitting nice yeah well speaking of crafts let's go ahead and show off the projects that we have this week uh, Brie you want to kick it off absolutely so you all may notice this beautiful sweater I'm hey. wearing <laughs> um, I'll try and lean up yeah, a little bit so yeah. you can see it. So you can see the detailing here. I've got some nice detailing on the arms. So Melissa made me this. Hey. Good yeah. job, Melissa. Hey. Um, I think she probably uh, shouted out on the uh, last episode that this is the Tin Can Knits sweater. Mm -hmm. Flax. Flax. Yep. And so, yeah, she just finished this for me. It's my first time ever wearing it. And it's got her little, her little tag on it. So it's specifically from her for me um, so yeah I am excited about this the other projects I have so I'm going to show some of the projects that I've completed um, this is my favorite project that I made for my friend Colleen this was a birthday present her birthday is in January and she just got it in like June or maybe even later maybe August um, <laughs> so it is a shawl and it is massive so if you guys could help me take yes. a so this is the project. Um, this is the Easy Color Block Shawl. You can find it on Ravelry. The artist is Sarah Knight. And I did mostly, I followed the pattern exactly, except I didn't add tassels to mine. She has little, um, little, a little fringe on hers. So I didn't add those. But this yarn is the City Tweed from Knit Picks. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about budget buys and I'll kind of go into how much I spent on this project alone but this is my favorite project and this is a beginner's project I it took me a long time to do it but it's awesome because this is just garter stitch which is the first thing all knitters learn and it is just so easy anyone could do it I could literally show anyone how to do this project um, so yeah this is my favorite project and then I just finished this hat this is a pretty pretty great hat this is for my husband but I made I actually ended up making three of them because I <laughs> I switched out the yarn size from the pattern so it called for DK but I picked these worsted colors and it was a little complicated the first one I didn't size properly so it ended up being really big and this is the second one um, <laughs> I sized it a little bit too small and then the third one actually went to the person it was intended for my friend Jared and it was sized appropriately so um, so I'm really excited about this hat this is the chamomile hat from Claire Devine and it's in her tea collection so um, Melissa made me this exact same hat in a different color she mm -hmm. did use DK and it's lovely <laughs> <laughs> 
and uh, and yeah I love the hat I love the stripes it's it's got a little bit of a different pattern it's not this isn't just knitted um, there's some texture here so I really like that about this one and I got to make it a pom-pom all right and last one is this one is just a little project that I make a lot um, this is a baby bib um, I put a little little button on it and you can close it and it's a little bib we're gonna tra talk about this on drop a dime save a dime because this is a really good project for that um, I just started this one so there's not much to it but I'm working on my first set of mittens so very excited about that and I'm using magic loop um, I decided that I don't want to be a knitter that does DPNs <laughs> and they just make things look hard and cumbersome and not fun and magic loops actually really easy so that's what I'm that's what I'm working on right now she she inherited that from me I yes. also hate DPNs. <laughs> Cool, all right, I'll go next. So last time y'all saw this guy and I finished him up. He was as terrible as I thought he was gonna be. <laughs> You'll see the red at the bottom isn't even because by the time I finished the last one, I realized that the middle two were uneven. I was like, nah, I'm done. I'm <laughs> done with this project. The dimension isn't really there unless you know that you're supposed to be looking for dimension, but I'm okay with it. So, if anyone wants this, holla! Because <laughs> I don't want to keep it here. Uh, now, this is one that we did make for the house, and this is a Goonies one I referenced earlier. So, it's just our Wi Fi password. And this one I drafted on my own. I used the Solvi water soluble sticky thing because of printing or not being able to draw on the black fabric was really inhibiting me. I, didn't, I knew that I wouldn't be able to use chalk. And so I got the sticky salvy stuff and it worked really well. I'm really happy with it. I just put it through the printer and then it was done. The only thing that I really traced was the, I did use the Goonies font at the top and then the middle part is the Chester Copper Pucky that everyone loves so much. And then this is my one work in progress. Uh, I'm making another piece for a couple of uh, friends of mine that just got married. Uh, so this is for Allison and Jack. Uh, this one, I just looked at a bunch of pine embroidery online and then self-drafted it. And I don't know if you saw the Raven last time. The Raven is this really cool thing that Melissa bought for me. It's just a magnet on both sides. And it works really well for holding needles uh, so that you don't have to like, pe like pierce your project uh, to keep your needle in place. Anyway, but yeah, this one was really easy. This one, uh, the Goonies one, took me less than a day. And this one has, it collectively, has taken me less than eight hours. So I'm really happy with both of them. Nice. Alright, so I have, look my finished, I don't have a finished object. I have a swatch of a finished object. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my swatch last week. I showed you the yarn for Trina's sweater that I'm still designing in my head. So we haven't cast on for it yet. But this is my swatch. And one of the things I learned at the retreat was in Patty Lyons' Chart It, Swatch It, Love It class was how to do a proper swatch and like actually treat it correctly in order to get gauge and then make a garment that fits somebody. So this was knitted, <clears throat> I knitted this inside out using Portuguese knitting for the Fair Isle. So like it was very, it was super neat because you were looking at your floats as you were making them, which is very different than if I had knitted, you know, holding one yarn continental and one yarn English um, where like you kind of like turn to see your floats but the Portuguese went super it was much faster much much faster and I felt like it was it made my floats much more uniform like this is this is just as gorgeous to me being you know a fairly frequent fair aisle knitter this looks just as beautiful on the back to me than it does in the front and that's almost never happened to me so I'm you know and this was washed blocked hung weighted the whole kit and caboodle so many things were done to this swatch um, and I'm really excited about the design how well the design went how well the the gauge between the two different yarns went I'm I'm super stoked about and the feel um, the only thing I didn't do to this swatch which I should do is steek it because I have to steek Trina's cardigan um, but I'm very terrified that I'm going to be playing yarn chicken and so I have made 
the executive decision to not steak my swatch because I'm pretty sure I'm going to be playing yarn chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have craft is um, you can't see his hat. So I also finished this hat for our cousin Sarah and this is the Hohi Locatelli BA Cool and I I made it, I made this hat because I wanted to try the yarn. That's really, that was really the inspiration. So this is Wolf Folk Luft and it's, um, it's a cotton webbing that has the merino kind of blown through it and so it creates this great fuzzy effect and it's, um, it's a lot of fun to work with and it was a little bit, I'll tell you that the yarn itself was pretty sticky, like it wanted to stick to itself, um, but after a couple days after the block, it's just soft and lovely and gorgeous, and then Trina, y'all, y'all, you see this mom? <laughs> Look at this mom, mom. This mom, this mom, mom is incredible. That's what it is. Incredible. So Trina made the pom-pom for the hat. Sarah, so Sarah was, Sarah watches last week's, or last month's episode, and she's like, I love it, I need a hat. And she sent me a hat, and I was like, I'm not going to make that hat. But I'll make you this hat. And she was like, well, I don't want a pom-pom. And, like, in my head, I was like, what kind of life have you lived <laughs> that you feel like you don't need a pom-pom? Everybody needs a pom-pom. <laughs> so she watches the episode, and she, like, texts me back in all capital letters. I was wrong. I need a pom-pom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you came to your Sunday. <laughs> Life is not complete without mom moms. There's two. There's two. <laughs> so, so now she has. That's the most favorite. This is the most fabulous pom pom mm -hmm. in the history of pom poms. It's literally the prettiest pom pom I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> and this is gonna go live its best life in Brooklyn. So this was a knit along at my local yarn store. So this is the optical triangle shawl from Iris from Art Yarns. And I'm sorry, Iris, I didn't want to murder your last name because I don't think I can pronounce it. But it's gorgeous. This was, I don't knit shawls. I'll be completely honest with you. I'm not a real big shawl knitter. But this was a lot of fun to knit. The yarn has a really nice hand. This was, um, this was Merino Cloud and Silk Dream. And the the yarn had such a nice hand and it's so squishy. This is squishy. <laughs> right, like I just kept like I just kept squishing it. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun to, it went really fast. I finished it in like four or five days just because I couldn't put it down because it just felt so nice in my hands and I just mm -hmm. wanted to keep working on it. So it's so squishy, I could die. <laughs> <laughs> And then this is my work in progress. This is my Harbor Village by Amy Herzog. So this is the bottom back side. This is the tushy covering part of my sweater. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I made this with um, Periwinkle Sheep Delirium. That's the name of the yarn. Nice. So one of the things that we forgot to do in the first episode that we want to do in the future is Disney bound all the stuff that we make. So what we're going to do now is we're going to ask Craftus to be our model and well as much as we can since that since we have three people in here but we're going to have Craftus be our model and we're going to discuss what we think he could Disney bound as with these projects. So first up we have the hat which you can't see if most puts it on. Uh, oh yeah, oh right on the arm, perfect. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, keep those paws warm. <laughs> Uh, Kraftus, Kraftus, if you went to Disney with that hat on, who do you think you would be? Yeah. Okay, so he's Stove from Beauty and the Beast. Stove from Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he does keep things warm, so oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, you want to do one of yours? Yes, so <coughs> I will do my hat as well. I don't want to cover his pom pom, so we'll do it over here. All right, Craftus, who do you think you would be with this hat? <laughs> All right, so we're thinking the Huntsman. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Snow so White. From Snow White. Okay, yeah. I like it. Yeah. I can see you hunting some things down. Yeah. Okay. All those prickly bits. <laughs> <laughs> I will stab you. 
All right, so let's look at the shawl. See how Crafters would do with this lovely shawl on. Ooh, oh, man, you are man. Slain, Abra. Sleek. I like it. All right. <laughs> you look like Lenny Kravitz. That's what you look like. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so who do we think Crafters looks like with the shawl on? Ooh. Mm. Those colors. I don't know. What about... <laughs> what about Phoebus from <laughs> Strike of Notre Dame? Hunchback. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I think he wears yeah. something that's this blue. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's appropriate. Phoebus. Yeah. What kind of name is that? Phoebus. Mm. Phoebus. 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 Do you have another one? I have one more, yeah. All right. So we'll do the shawl. Alright. Ooh. Yeah. It's a very fancy shawl. It is lovely. Yeah. Yeah, he's on the town with that one. Yeah. Uh-huh. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Okay. So craft this. Alright, who do you think that you look like? Oh, I agree. I agree. Yes, Pacho. absolutely. Pacho. He's Calypso from mm -hmm. from the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. I yeah. love it. I love Calypso, it. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> It's been a long time since I saw that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to our vlogs statement segment. Drop a dime, save a dime. Uh, so what we want to talk about this week is getting started. Uh, a lot of times, just going shopping, just thinking like, I want to learn how to knit. But going to the store and looking at how much needles are and looking at how much yarn is, you think, I can't afford to knit. <laughs> And so, uh, so I'm going to let uh, Melissa and Bridget take the lead on how they got started. Initially, I got started because of my book club. And one of my friends who was going to help teach me knit, she got me a little beginner set from Michael's or Joanne's. And one of those little $10 sets that has two different sizes of needles, a pattern book, and a few notions. And she got me that. I went to Walmart, I think, and bought some really cheap acrylic yarn. And I just started that way. But I got really lucky in that Melissa has had a ton of extra yarn and she had recently gotten a brand new set of needles so she gave me a complete set which is definitely out of the ordinary but amazing <laughs> because they were pretty nice needles and I immediately had a full set so that's how I got started. Yeah and that's, that's actually one of my first um, suggestions is call your family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody has knitting needles and 1980s acrylic yarn in their attic. So, I mean, it's free to, to learn to knit. And th the first thing that you make isn't going to be something that you love and wear and cherish for mm -hmm. the rest of your life. It's going to have holes in it. It's going to be a mess. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Keep going. It feels terrible because you're using really crappy yarn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to convince yourself that you want to keep going. Um, so, yeah, somebody has all the things that you need to get started in their attic and so maybe maybe it's not your family and you have to go to an estate sale but they're 50 like every almost every garage sale I've ever been to has yarn and or knitting things for 25 mm -hmm. cents yeah yeah I, I would say the same as for embroidery I did buy one of those starter kits that you see advertised like if you just search embroidery kit it comes with four sizes of hoops and maybe 50 skeins of floss and I yeah I just I bought that because I didn't know anyone who embroidered uh, but going back I wish that I had checked eBay first because since checking eBay because you know you, like there's so many colors for floss as there is with yarn and so when I think of projects I'm like oh I wish this green just had a little more blue in it and so when I but I don't but even though embroidery floss is super cheap like sometimes it's like a dollar and that's the expensive floss. That's not even the cheap floss. And so I thought to myself, well, let me see what eBay has. And eBay, because people are cleaning out their grandmother's homes, they just have, like, so much stuff. So one of the things I didn't show earlier, while I didn't want to work on that Union Station project, I did this. I wrapped all of my floss and I put it in rainbow order. And... <laughs> I was just like, I don't want to work on that project, but I need to be doing something embroidery based. In this case, I'm pretty sure it's an old tackle box, but my mom got it at a yard sale, so I didn't buy it. Uh, I don't know if your parents are as generous as ours, but my mom is very generous, mm -hmm. and she wants to support us in the things that we do, mm -hmm. and so she is always on the lookout. And so if you have friends that, friends or family, 
that do yard sailing on the weekends, then ask them to just keep an eye out for stuff because with Venmo, it's easy to pay people back these mm -hmm. days. Um, and there's just so much stuff out there that people are trying to get rid of that they'll give it to you for cheap. Mm -hmm. We think. Yeah. Uh, let us know ways that you were able to get started for cheap in the comment section and maybe we'll be able to apply those and see for ourselves how well they work. Mm -hmm. If calling your mom and asking what's in the attic, I called my mom and asked what was in the attic and nobody in my family has ever knitted, to my knowledge, in my entire life. I called my mom and was like, hey, I, t I'm g I think I'm going to take up knitting. She had my Aunt Alice's needles in, in the attic. She had 400 knitting needles in the attic that... I didn't even know existed. So, and that's why I say call your mom. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you tell people you start, you're starting a new craft, they want to give you stuff. Yeah, that's so true. Mm -hmm. Like I've had multiple people who I sell, oh, I'm a knitter. They're like, oh, I have so much yarn. Can I give it to you? And yeah, if I needed it, I would say yes. Luckily, I have way too much yarn right now, but I could take it. Yeah. Next week or next month, we'll talk about storing your craft. <laughs> storage <laughs> um, but yeah if, if that doesn't work out for you then just buy one right don't don't buy don't go to a yarn store and get talked into buying an entire set of needles you need you need a set of needles you can probably pick up a set of needles and a skein of yarn at Michael's for under six dollars mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah if you'd yeah. like, take the coupon. Take the coupon. Back. Yeah. And don't forget, on our Twitter feed, uh, we're retweeting everyone's sales from all the craft stores that we found. If there's more craft stores that you'd like to see listed, again, let us know in the comments. Just a few other notes about saving money. I know that once you get into knitting, you're going to care about what type of yarn you use, and you're going to want it to have a certain feel and a certain hand to it, and you're going to care a lot about that. But when you're making projects for other people, it's pretty easy to actually make them really cheap because other people, if you're a knitter, they, you understand the way yarn feels, but if you're not, you don't. And so I did want to mention like this little bib right here, I've probably made 20 of these. Number one, they take zero time to make, and I think they're really cute. And the yarn I use for this is a horrible feeling denim-like cotton called Sweet Dreams, or no, sorry, it's called Sugar and Cream. And this cost me less than $2. In fact, I could probably make two of these from one skein. So you can do that for other people. It might not be what you would put on your chest or something you'd want to wear on your head. But if, for, if it's for someone else, they're not going to care as much about the quality of the yarn. They're just going to really appreciate you making something. Um, same goes for this hat. you got to think not just about the, the project. Think about who's getting it, who's going to wear it, and what, how they're going to treat it too. So this hat is made from acrylic because the person I made it for, he's really outdoorsy, he's a man, he's probably going to wear it and sweat in it or be out hiking and doing all kinds of stuff. So, you know, I'm not going to give him something that's made of like um, alpaca or something, you know, super fancy. This is really adorable, he can throw it in the wash if he wants to. And, you know, picking acrylic for certain people is okay. I recently made a baby blanket made of acrylic and that's okay because babies are going to do all kinds of stuff on that and you can just throw it in the wash. It's really adorable. So. Thinking up too about what the project's going to be used for and who you're making it for can help you save money because you don't need to spend a lot of money on yarn if that's not really the need for that person. And for this project, this took me about nine skeins, which is actually a Ooh. lot of yarn. <laughs> yeah, that's why it took me so long because I got really sick of it for a while. But this yarn in total only cost me $45, which I think many, plenty of people would pay $45 for a shawl like this, if not more. And I bought it during Knit Picks Christmas sale, which was 50% off. So I bought enough for her, I bought enough for me, I'm going to make my own shawl <laughs> one day. And, you know, looking for sales like that is really important. Um, another thing is just randomly, the other day I was on AC Moore's website, and they had this thing where if you signed up for this website called freeshipping.com, they would give you a $10 AC Moore gift card. The sign up was kind of tricky because it actually cost me $2 to sign up. But then, like, two or three weeks later, I got a $10 gift card in the mail. So, you know, $8 saved to AC more. Yay. <laughs> Let's talk about our stitch flicks for the week. I have been reading a bunch. I finished The Magic of Tidying Up, which is what I was reading last time we saw one another. And then I also finished In Fairly Field, which is another World War II one. Mm -hmm. That one was good in that the mystery 
kept going until the very last mm -hmm. chapter. I really I really liked that one. That's a good one. Yeah, and then I read A Man Called Uva, which uh, they've both read and we all recommend. Uh, we had this gentleman who lived two doors down from us when we were kids, and he was very much like Uva. He was like kind of a grump, but he loved me. <laughs> and he would send me to the corner store nearly every day to buy myself and him a soda. And then he, his house always, he just always had bowls of caramel that he would like give out to all the kids on the block. And it reminded me of him and it was really nice. Uh, I also read Crooked Little Lies, which was very predictable. It was a good enough read, but I wouldn't recommend it unless you're just trying to kill time. It was, I could see the plot well ahead than when I needed to. Uh, I read The Einstein Prophecy, which was really fun. It was a lot like a Dan Brown book. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, but it dealt with Einstein and, uh, and Egyptology instead of Christianity. Why did you uh, so that one, that one was cool, <laughs> yeah. And then for watching TV shows, I binge-watched all of Person Adventures, so I loved Lost. I still love Lost. I would watch Lost again if someone said, I want to watch Lost, but I don't have anyone to watch it with. I'd be like, pick me! <laughs> <laughs> I love Lost. And so I initially hesitated to watch Person of Interest because Michael Emerson's character in Lost was so evil that I was like, I don't know that I can watch that again. But our dad said, no, he's a really good guy in this show. And I also like Jim Caviezel. My only complaint about Person of Interest was that Jim Caviezel's character like whispers the whole time. <laughs> And it really, it's like really frustrating and so I went and read about it and they're saying like, oh, when you talk like that, that shows like you're in control all the time. But what it said to me was, please speak up. <laughs> I cannot hear you. Um, so I watched Person of Interest and if you haven't watched Person of Interest, it's essentially a show where the, a computer is determining who is going to be murdered or who might be murdering someone based off of all the cameras and, that are watching us. and. After, while watching that, I also watched Snowden, Ooh. which is, is the, the real life story of that. And so now, I'm super paranoid about the FBI watching us right now. I am an FBI agent! Craig just, what? <laughs> well, at least I know you. It's true, that. <laughs> 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 so I went, remember I told you I got better at the library? Being good at the library <laughs> means I have a list of books and almost zero television shows. So I'm just going to go through the highlights of the books I really liked. I read How to Hang a Witch right before Trina and I went on a short trip to Salem. And while it was super dramatic, like super dramatic. It did have a lot of nice things about Salem <laughs> that, that I was able to use during our trip. It told me about the friendship ship that wasn't there. Oh yeah. Yeah, so and and it did like it told me about like the houses and society in, in Salem. It was very good. Just super dramatic. I needed light reading and so I read when life gives you Lululemons, which made me irrationally angry. Just like <laughs> it, it it should have been like a light but no, the, the, the husband in it was a, mo like, not even like a real monster, he didn't like, not abuse or anything, just like, his actions that he took made me want to go find him and murder him. Oh, no. <laughs> Irrationally angry. <laughs> and it's supposed to be a funny read. It's like the, <laughs> it's, it's like this, it's the sequel to, um, The Devil Wears Prada. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, which is supposed to be, yeah. Irrationally angry. <laughs> and then th I read the All Girls Filling Station Last Reunion, which is part of my like World War II, but that one's about World War II girl pilots. That was fantastic. And it was, when I went to the library, it was one of those books that was just like, this is available because nobody else is reading it. And so I highly recommend it. It was, a, it was fun. It was adventurous. It was it was a great story. It was a wonderful story. Girls, girls flying World War II bombers. Amazing. Uh, and that was the all-girl filling station's last reunion. And then I read um, Atomic City Girls. I don't really recommend it. The ending was really terrible. And the, the whole premise of the book, I thought I was going to read about, like, girls who were building the atomic mm -hmm. bomb. Mm -hmm. And it was part of that, but it was also part of, like, 
girls hating on girls and I'm never no, about that no, life. It was no. a lot of cattiness and manipulation and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't get into it. It wasn't my thing. So I'm sorry, Atomic City Girls. I didn't, I didn't love it. Um, I, I did manage to watch one show that I'm pretty excited to tell y'all about. I watched the new episode, the new reboot of Murphy Brown. I loved it. I, like, I know it's silly. I loved it. I loved seeing all the old characters come back. I loved seeing Murphy Brown. I, I felt like they did a good job. It was, it was fantastic. It was, I really enjoyed it. It was very nostalgic for me. I love nostalgia. So it was, I heavily, heavily encourage everybody to go check out the new Murphy Brown. Tell us if you liked it or not. Yeah. So what I've been reading lately is I just started the Alice Network. I'm probably one-fourth of the way in, and that was a recommendation from these two. They loved it. And I've also recently finished the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society. <laughs> and Melissa also read that one. Okay. So I I'm just a, watched the movie, but it's still good. <laughs> I mean, hey, you know, you get a storyline in general. Um, that one was recommended to me by two friends who are also knitters, and they wanted to get together to watch the movie. and. Um, so in order to do that, of course, I wanted to read the book first because I love reading a book before I see a movie. So that one was fantastic. It was a lovely read. You could, you felt like you were there. The um, imagery was beautiful, and I really, I really recommend that one. And I mean, if you want to attach that to knitting and crafting, Guernsey has their own sweater style. Oh, so you, could know that. you could read the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society, watch the movie, and knit yourself a Guernsey sweater. That is awesome. Isn't that neat? That is very cool. Um, as far as TV shows, I haven't watched anything new. I watched Castle Rock about a month ago, yeah. which was pretty good. Yeah. Love some Scars Guards. Um, <laughs> the ending was confusing. Yes. And just that I thought the show was going to wrap up, but then it didn't really feel like it did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it did not. But there was a lot of nice suspense, a lot of, mm -hmm. um, you know, throws to other Stephen King novels, and yeah, I enjoyed it in yeah. general. I love horror films, and I love Halloween, so since it's October, my husband and I have been binging a lot of scary things, but my favorite so far that's been kind of out of the dark, haven't seen it before, and just a random Netflix movie was As Above, So Below. It's a really interesting Tomb Raider style story and it was kind of fun to watch because everybody has their own hell that they're experiencing huh. and I love a movie like that where yeah. everybody's got their own storyline so that is a very random movie that I highly recommend okay yeah yeah so let us know what you're stitch flixing uh, in the comments below and if you recommend it or not yeah. and let us know if you read up on any of the things that we've talked about so we can chat about them yeah I, uh, Bridget came up for the weekend, so I just have, like, one last thing, because Bridget came up for the weekend, and yesterday we got to spend the day at Neighborhood Fiber Company during their crafternoon, mm -hmm. so all three of us took our crafts yeah. and went out into the public, <laughs> public being Neighborhood Fiber Company, mm -hmm. the yarn store. <laughs> yeah, it was really, it was really nice. The, they had a really great space. Becca helped us out a bunch, and she kept telling us to like, please touch everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was really cool. And, and 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 that's so true. Like a lot of times you buy yarn online, but when you get the when you get the ability to go in and touch it, then you know that that's the yarn mm -hmm. you want to buy online. Mm -hmm. And I think that you know since yarn is so tactile, that's it was great that they that that was their kind of mission yeah to come touch the yarn as a non-knitter their color blends are so beautiful that i think to myself i want to knit something with that <laughs> yeah like if you haven't visited their website we'll link it below and we highly recommend it because it's just their color their colorway is it called colorway yeah mm -hmm. yeah their colorways are gorgeous mm -hmm. yeah they have a seasonal one out right now called fog point that i actually purchased and it drew me in. I couldn't not buy it. I immediately knew what I like wanted to do with it. I was like, this has to be a really high visibility piece because I'm going to wear it all the time. I want everybody to see this color. So yes, very excited about them. And I bought a new, I bought their new sweatshirt because it was the thing I wanted. So the back of it, I don't, here. So the back of it says ball so hard. I love it. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, and that was, yeah, that was our trip to Baltimore yesterday. Yeah, it was funny because they were getting ready for Rhinebeck, and so they had crates and crates <laughs> yeah. and crates and yeah. crates in their stock room full of yarn for sale. Yeah. If you're going to Rhinebeck, stop.
stop at the neighborhood fiber absolutely company. yeah they're, they're ready for you <laughs> 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 Thank y'all again so much for joining us. We hope that you're getting as much out of this as we are. We're having such a fun time filming it. Thank you, Bridget, so much for coming yeah. up to film with us. Happy to do it. Yeah. Oh, we didn't guest star. We didn't Disney bound your sweater. Do we want to do that now? Yes, we do. Okay. <laughs> All right. Who, who did we say this one was again? We think that Brie could go as Jenny. From, is it Jenny from Oliver? From Oliver and yep. Company. Like. Melissa and I were like, I don't know, maybe Snow, or maybe Cinderella, or who was the other one? Or Elsa. We were like, Elsa. Cinderella, Elsa. or Elsa, and I was like, I don't know, those aren't necessarily their blues. And so I was like, Melissa, look up the girl from Oliver <laughs> Company. And it was a perfect match. Awesome. So Brie could go as Jenny from Oliver and Company in this sweater. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, thank y'all so much. If there's anything that you think we can add, anything that you think we should cut, give us some feedback below in the comments. We really want to do this for y'all, so we really want to hear from y'all. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Thanks. Yeah. See y'all later, niches.